Let's move on to another topic that's directly related to this, which is the gut microbiome and mental health. And if you don't know much about the gut microbiome, I, I have like 25 hours of lectures on this, but I'm gonna condense it into five slides. All right, so, so first of all, there's 100,000 times more microbes in one human gut than people on the planet right now. 100 trillion cells total, which means that only 10% of our cells are human. The total weight of this mass is between two and six pounds, more than our brain weighs, actually. 100 species containing seven million genes, 360 bacterial genes for every human gene. The microbiome varies from person to person. It's like a fingerprint, no two are exactly alike. Now, the gut microbiome is a relatively new area of study, but it's become part of every medical specialty. It's hard to ignore. And negative changes in the microbiome contribute to all kinds of diseases, of course the physical ones, but we now know that there is a relationship between microbiome and physical and psychological health. Now, how do we get our microbiome? Well, we get some of this bacteria in the placenta. There are about 300 species there. During vaginal birth, um, babies born C-section acquire their bacteria differently, and we do way too many C-sections here in the United States, um, and then breastfeeding. And you'll see all these references here. I mean, again, this talk could go on forever, but we're gonna make it short. Um, now, here's where it gets really interesting. The brain and the gut bacteria talk to each other, and then the microbes in your gut, they talk to each other too. The gut microbes influence our emotions, our pain sensitivity, social interactions, decision making. In fact, there's a new study, I just read it yesterday morning and I'm going to create a video on it, showing that your personality is reflected in your gut microbiome. Different people with different personalities develop different microbiomes. So the gut microbes generate and send signals to the brain and they can reinforce and prolong an emotional state. The connection is hardwired through the vagus nerve, but the transmission of information also is carried through the bloodstream. The gut has its own nervous system, the enteric nervous system or second brain, and it's made up of 50 to 100 million nerve cells. Um, feelings of anger and threat and fear override and, and divert the ENS from its main routine. Stress hormones are released, nerve signals are sent to the ENS that inhibit function, the behavior of microbes is altered. It's influenced by bad things like traffic and financial stress and also by good things like hugs and kind words from friends and a family meal. The gut responds to every emotion that humans feel. And when you think about it, our language is full of expressions that show that. How many people have ever said, I'm all choked up about something? I have a gut instinct about this, right? Butterflies in my stomach, right? That was a gut-wrenching experience. So our language is filled with statements that indicate uh, this connection. Now here's where it gets really interesting. There's more endocrine cells in the gut than the total of all other endocrine organs in the body. When spread out, it's larger than a basketball court. The gut is the large stor largest storage depot for serotonin. 95% of it is there. It's used to regulate normal gut function, sleep, appetite, pain sensitivity, and mood. It functions as a hormone, but also as a neurotransmitter regulating behavior and mood. It binds with 5-HT receptors, which are the targets for medication when treating diarrhea and nausea. Just an example of the connection between gut and emotions. SSRIs are drugs that are used to treat depression, and the side effects, interestingly, include gastrointestinal problems like nausea and diarrhea. Serotonin is produced by enterochromaffin cells in the gut, which is triggered by the movement of food through the system, which may be why people feel so good after eating. It also explains why people who convert to a more plant-based diet often say that they feel psychologically better. There's an actual biological reason for this, and it's the constant passage of food. I mean, if you eat this diet, I don't know about you guys, but you get hungry about every three hours and have to eat again because the food moves quickly through the system due to the fiber content. So there's actually a biological mechanism to explain why a more plant-based diet would affect your mood so positively. So, um, let's talk about studies that have been done on the gut microbiome and mood and emotion. Germ-free animals bred for research showed significant alterations in brain development, especially parts of the brain involved in emotional regulation. If you transplant fecal pellets from an extrovert mouse into an introvert mouse, the introvert mouse becomes an extrovert. In other words, going to the fact that your microbiome resembles your personality characteristics and your sociability. Microbes from obese mice can turn lean mice into overeaters, and the interaction from the, between the brain and the gut can either promote optimal health or make people vulnerable to many diseases, including um, psychological issues that are negative. 
1933, psychiatrist Joseph Kilman wrote, see we've known about this stuff for such a long time, it's far from our mind to conceive that all mental conditions have the same etiological factor, but we feel justified in recognizing the existence of cases of mental disorders which have as a basic etiological factor a toxic condition arising in the gastrointestinal tract. Written in 1933. One of these days, I'm going to start my own medical journal. I'm going to call it the Journal of Forgotten Research, where we're going to put all the stuff we know about forever in one place for people to read it. Neg yes, <laughs> negative changes to the microbiome are common in conditions that are associated with high incidence of depression, IBS, chronic fatigue, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. Antibiotics and NSAIDs. Um, often affect mood because they wipe out huge swaths of the microbiome. Um, the most vulnerable to the effect of antibiotics are the beneficial bacteria, and the pathogenic bacteria are pretty resistant to the effect of antibiotics and NSAIDs. So you end up with inflammation in the gut, destruction of beneficial bacteria, and um, you can not only end up with um, Physical conditions like autoimmune diseases and allergies are common manifestations, but you can end up with negative psychological state as well. And in fact, we have a lot of studies showing that um, um, antibiotics are related to psychological issues. One example, analysis of patient records showed that people with serious mental disorders who were hospitalized for mania were more likely to be taking antibiotics for infection than people hospitalized without psychological problems. And a lot of studies have shown that um, taking antibiotics is a risk factor for psychiatric and behavioral problems. And in addition to the destruction of the bacteria, it might be related to mitochondrial dysfunction as well. Um, one thing, if you want to have a healthy microbiome, there's no question that a plant-based eating pattern is the best way to get there. Um, vegan diets have a positive effect on inflammation-related disease, and inflammation affects everything, including your mental health. And I'll just read this, just a piece of this, is a quote from the study. The vegan gut profile appears to be unique in several characteristics, including a reduced abundance of pathobionts and a greater abundance of protective species. So again, the closer you get to that plant-based eating pattern, the healthier you're your body is going to be, the healthier emotional state, and the healthier your bacteria in your gut, which is, has a huge influence on your emotional state. So if you've wiped it all out, in addition to changing your diet, you may need to take probiotics. And there's some very provocative studies about this. In experiments on mice, probiotics lower anxiety levels. Um, one lactobacillus formula was given to 16 healthy mice and 20 controls were given a bacteria-free solution. And when stress tests were administered, the mice given bacteria ventured out into the open a lot more. They were more likely to struggle instead of giving up when forced to swim. Uh, the effects of probiotics were very similar to the effects of antidepressants. Now, for the record, I'm going to tell you I object to this type of research, but it's out there and it's done, so we might as well use it. Um, an Irish psychiatrist, I think I went too far. Um, John Cryan is an Irish psychiatrist, and he did some studies on rats and showed that bifidobacterium reduced depression and anxiety symptoms as much as Lexapro. And this is important. There are other studies that have confirmed this. Now, when you go home today, look up the side effects of Lexapro. And I think that you will agree that probiotics, which are significantly less expensive, not addictive, are a much better alternative. IBS patients. Twice as many patients taking a probiotic reported improvements in depressive symptoms as controls taking a placebo. And a double-blind placebo-controlled study, 30-day supplementation with lactobacillus and bifidobacteria lowered psychological distress and depression, decreased anger and hostility. Low-grade inflammation is associated with psychological disorders and actually most physical disorders as well. Probiotics lower inflammation levels. Oxidative stress has been known to be a cause of depression uh, and an effect of depression. Even skin biopsies of depressed people show higher levels of oxidative stress, and taking probiotics has been shown to lower oxidative stress. trouble with this the other day, but 
Okay. I think a review of 10 studies concluded that daily probiotic supplementation can improve mood, anxiety, and cognitive symptoms in people with major depression. The most significant effect was on anxiety. Researchers concluded that the use of probiotics for major depression and anxiety could be important due to the limitations of drugs, including the fact that they are often ineffective and there are safety issues associated with them. A randomized double-blind placebo-controlled uh, trial of uh, chronic fatigue patients given 24 billion CFU probiotic or placebo for two months, significant changes in the microbiome, significant decreases in symptoms of anxiety. A review of five studies showed that taking probiotics resulted in significant reduction of depression and reduction in the risk of depression. And there are hundreds of studies like this. Now, one of the things that I think is interesting about the gut microbiome and these bacteria, how can these single-cell organisms have so much influence influence on the totality of who we are. It's amazing how smart they are. In fact, they can live outside your body. You know, we need them more than they need us, which is interesting. And um, one thing I'll share with you about the power of single cell organisms, there's a, a bacteria that lives in the guts of cats, and the bacteria likes it there. T. Gandhi, I think, is the name of it. And so uh, when cats excrete, when they, when they have a bowel movement, the bacteria come out. And rats, I hope nobody's eating breakfast while I tell you this, but rats like to eat cat poop. And so the bacteria end up in the rats, but the bacteria doesn't want to be there. So they hijack a portion of the rat's brain that makes the rat afraid of cats. So the rats hang out with the cats and the cats eat the rats and the bacteria end up back in the cat where they want to be, all right? So these are pretty smart critters. And I think that when we don't take care of the bugs in our gut, we do this at our own peril in a major, major sort of way. So. Um, be nice to the bug guts, and, 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 or the gut bugs, rather. And, um, and one thing I'll tell you, too, is so, this happened a long time ago where these creatures decided to live inside of other creatures. Like, even flies have a, have a microbiome in ants. Now, it's much tinier compared to ours, but all living creatures have a microbiome. And so the agreement that got made, in real simple terms, when, when um, these microbes started moving into humans is, okay, here's our agreement. You get to live inside of me. You get to see the world on me and I'll take care of the food. And then in return, you're gonna have, you know, make it easier for me to stay in a, in a stable mood state. You're gonna help control my immune system, help me absorb nutrients from foods and all these kinds of things. But here's the problem, folks. We have violated that contract big time. And so we have to go back to feeding the, the gut microbes what they like and the good microbes like uh, carbohydrate and fiber and also using probiotics to replace the microbes because they're not part of our body. So if I scratch my arm, I can fix it because my body can heal itself. But if I destroy my microbiome, I can't necessarily fix that. It's like if I own an apartment building and the tenants move out, I have to go find new humans to live in the apartment, right? So that's why probiotics can be very, very helpful in terms of replacing damaged or non-existent beneficial bacteria. 